Well, hello there. So, today I'm actually going handheld for the first time in like five videos. That's because I just want to make a quick little vlog, mainly because I haven't posted anything in like two months or so. I don't even remember. So, thing is, yesterday I went to the thrift store and well I, I just went there mainly because I don't know I was bored so I just decided to go out and as soon as I came in in front of the door there was a little table with this thing on top this is a beta cord well a Sanyo beta cord BTC 5000 beta Recorder and player Yeah, really really freaking cool. That is not the time. That is the time so <laughs> I have been looking for a Betamax uh, Tape player a VCR for quite a while now. I, I had like three uh, Beta tapes not really that many mainly because they're quite rare around here and also they're expensive they're really expensive like people who have beta tapes just uh, hold on to them like if they were gold for some reason well I guess this has some kind of a cult status but the thing is the VCRs are even more uncommon than tapes mainly because well VCRs have belts and they have um, idler wheels and you know all those things that are made out of rubber and they just disintegrate with time so people just throw the VCRs away mainly because there's no uh, no more like authorized uh, technicians or technicians at all like in the here where I live like in the district where I live there's actually one repair shop that still repairs like analog stuff kind of like VCRs and uh, CRTs all that kind of stuff and, and well I actually found about the the store not that long ago I had seen it like lots of times uh, it, it actually was uh, when I went to high school uh, it was like uh, part of the trip there uh, like a, it was a like a 500 more like 700 meter uh, walk trip over to the from my house to the uh, to the high school and the store was in was uh, in the path and I just didn't uh, also you will have noticed my English is uh, kind of deteriorating a little bit mainly because I don't record many videos and it's it's the only times I, sp I speak English apart from you know post posting on uh, some image boards but uh, that's the thing so I didn't notice the store I went in there and in, into the store for the first time uh, since I live here which has been all of my life 20 years of it all 20 years of it yeah I'm 20 getting old not really, but yeah, feels like it. So uh, I went in there and I actually got a buttload of cassette tapes. Good ones too. They were Racks uh, HDX2s and one HDX1, uh, which is a Type 1 tape. The HDX2s are Type 2 chrome tapes, which I think are actual chromes. Like they have actual chrome, they do smell like crayons, which might actually uh, signify that. But yeah, I got a shitload of those. Um, I got VHS tapes. He just seems to have like the guy on the store seems to have uh, a lot of old stuff there. So uh, subject of, the, of this video, I've been ranting on for almost five minutes. This beta cord, uh, it is a really basic model, 
it has beep search which means uh, you have well this you can uh, search please don't uh, make comments about my hands you have made uh, some people have made comments about my hands like cutting my fingernails and all that fingernails fingernails are useful for leveraging things and uh, poking at stuff and yeah I use them a lot so I don't cut them and well yeah I kind of have some OCD with my fingers and yeah I just uh, rip my skin rip the skin off my fingers for some reason I don't know uh, if you actually if you want me to stop ripping the, the skin off my fingers get me a finger a uh, fidget cube or a finger box if you know what a finger box is you'll probably you can look it up but a a fidget cube would actually be quite nice please not a spinner but yeah I know nobody donates shit to me so <laughs> anyway uh, Betamax PAL beep search it does have uh, pause too still though the both the picture, ser picture search and the uh, pause are in black and white it has obviously recording it, it, it isn't called a beta chord for anything you know it has recording it's it only does beta what Americans know as beta 1 here in Europe we don't give a crap about beta 2 and beta 3 since uh, beta tapes uh, last like 20% longer or so due to the fact that we use a different way of encoding the signal on the tape it's not like VHS where the uh, the only thing different between NTSC uh, recordings and PAL recordings is simply the color system and the re refresh rate the well the field rate I don't know uh, actually the Betamax is I, I'm, I don't really know that much about Betamax, uh, mainly because I'm used to VHS, like I've used VHS all my life. Uh, whenever I record anything on analog, I do it with one of these, either with my MC20, which is this guy, or the other VHSC camcorder, which I got kind of recently. And yeah, I'm used to VHS, I just... Uh, and now someone had to message me. How about I silence my phone? And there we go. That's it. So, yeah. Uh, VHS. I'm used to VHS. So, beta. Actually, when I put a tape in it uh, and started playing, well, first I had to fix it. The belts on it were gone completely. Uh, the there was There's a belt back here which is the one that moves all the transport I'm not going to tear it down right now but if you know the transport of a beta uh, for Betamax you have your head drum here and then you have like a circle like so which completely rotates so when you put the cassette in look at this look at that doesn't that look cool so when you put a cassette in a video cassette right here what it does is it opens the door on the back of the cassette right there you can see that opens when you uh, put it down and there's a little sprocket thing that comes up and when you when you play it when you play the tape the sprocket actually turns all the way around and wraps the tape around the head drum and it goes back into the well actually goes make something like this so yeah uh, it's if, if you haven't seen a, a Betamax loading system I recommend you do so because it is just one of the most mechanic one of the most amazing mechanical things that have ever been done 
so yeah have ever been made rather so I have this tape here which I featured in what well, featured I just showed it in in, in an old vlog uh, get to know Spain Spanish version that's what it says uh, if you do not speak Spanish and well I have recorded something onto the end the this tape looks awful uh, it looks awful they pre-recorded material on it it looks awful it looks like if it was uh, like recorded from a VHS now I have this just video basic MX MSX this is a little video course on basic for the MSX and this is in Spanish so I have my doubts about look at this teddy bear hey <laughs> it's cute uh, I have my doubts about uploading this to YouTube mainly because it is in Spanish all of it is in Spanish but the thing is I, at least I want to upload the intro because it is what what most people these days would call aesthetic or rather or surgic or however yeah uh it really really looks like something a vaporwave uh, artist would make i kid you not uh, but yeah that's that and yeah well i i have recorded a little bit of my cat uh on this tape i have used my camera without recording on the camera i have used the video output directly fed into the video input of the VCR and yeah I'm running out of space so I, I hope I can at least get it on this take and let's see if we're getting a picture there we go that is my cat there I recorded her and I must say this thing looks a lot better than VHS it does this is a simple two head machine like it is one of the earliest uh, Betamax machines and it looks better than my my two head uh, you know VHS VCR and I'm running out of space so no I'm gonna do another take just for this thing which is something else I got and here we go this is the other thing I got this I found, uh, well, it wasn't in the thrift store, it was beside the uh, Betamax there. And well, I just saw this uh, Telefunken, Telefunken, I don't know, I am probably butchering that uh, pronunciation, but yeah, I saw this box with the logo and some, you know, audio inputs and outputs, then jacks. On the side and I thought well yeah it's gonna be one of those uh, portable turntables uh, that were so common in the, in the 60s and, and the early 70s but then I opened it up and yeah those were my those were my feet I opened it up and I found that it was actually a reel-to-reel It is a Magnetophone 201 TS and it is actually a 201, not a zero, it is an O. Uh, the exact model, let me flip it over a little bit, hopefully the tape doesn't fall out. Uh, it has the model plate here, it is a Type 201 TS. It is exactly the same, actually. I don't know why. I, well, except that O was actually a zero. No clue. Well, the thing is, it is a reel to reel. It is an extremely basic uh, reel to reel. It is two track. I think it is uh, two quarter track. I think it is quarter track. It is uh, quarter inch tape. Typical reel to reel tape. It runs at I don't know it, it is the I know it is the medium home speed uh, which is kind of adequate and it's the uh, only speed it does it is single speed so only it only does that I think it is the speed uh, on which pre-recorded tapes 
came on, so don't really care. Came with this tape. I don't have any other tapes for it. Uh, it is really simple. It is uh, uh, auto amplified, so it has its own speaker and all that. So basic features. It, it only has like stop, rewind, playback, forward, and of course record. Uh, it can play, as I said, two tracks. So you can switch between uh, track one, track two, or a mix of the two, which for some reason um, the it does have dual head amplifiers. So it, inside of it, there's actually two line level uh, outputs from those amplifiers. So technically you could play stereo tapes and get stereo output from it when it is in the P mode, which is both. But then it just mixes them down and, well, it only has one speaker, so it only outputs mono. But the thing is, uh, the headphone jack, sorry, this one, is mono too. And this output here is actually mono too. And this one is DIN, is DIN level. So that's pretty much useless these days. Uh, so yeah, now that we're here, it has a mute button. So when it's up there, it's making noise. Here, that's mute. Has a DIN uh, speaker output. I guess uh, typical four to like eight ohms. Headphone socket, another DIN plug. This is for hooking up a radio or a turntable to record from. Uh, it only records in mono too. That well, that's to be expected. It only records in mono. I think the head amplifiers for the record section of the thing. There's only one, so it only records mono. And uh, then there's a microphone, another DIN jack, and then there's this source select to switch between microphone and uh, radio or turntable. Uh, then over here we have our volume and power button. When you turn it on, it just turns on this light bulb, and the motor starts turning, of course. We have a tone control, so this is high and this is low. Uh, we have a pause button, which actually, uh, uh, I didn't know how to use this pause button, so it turns out that what you do is you press it down, and it like lowers itself, and you have to prop it up, and it pops out. Let me get a little bit. There you go, that's how it works. Then you have all the uh, track selector switch. You have a level meter, which sadly is cracked. It is a shame because the rest of the machine is pretty much brand new, only a bit dirty. Uh, even these uh, foam thingies on the that hold the tape uh, on the cover are perfectly fine, which is impressive for a machine that now is 50 years old. This was made in 1967, so it is 50 years old. Uh, yeah, it, it's had its belts replaced at some point because I opened it up uh, and the belts were pretty much brand new and I've never seen such an old uh, piece of equipment uh, with pretty much brand new belts. I think it, they were replaced at some point. Yeah, the thing, it, it actually sounds pretty good. Uh, I have, um, I have digitized this tape, uh, both, uh, both, uh, tracks. This is just a home tape, like, recorded with a microphone. It just has some old Christmas carols and, yeah, some people speaking and I, I think a little bit of a party or something. Uh, also, let me get the head cover out. Show you the little bit of the tape path. So we've got our erase head. This is AC bias. It has a dedicated oscillator actually on the circuit board. Uh, then we have our record and playback head, which is well two tracks. Let me see if powering it on you can actually better see. Uh, yeah, it is only two tracks. And we have our uh, pinch roller. No, sorry, our capstan there. Is which is rotating right now. Our pinch roller is down there. Then we have these uh, 
tensioners, tape guides, I don't know. So when you go into playback, you can see that the pinch roller engages there. And also this little roller here makes pressure against the race head. And yeah, the uh, level meter only works in record mode. And yeah, I mean, the thing works perfectly fine. It just does everything it is supposed to. Really, it just works. Let me, let's see what is on this side of the tape. Yeah, that's... That was some guy counting uh, in Spanish using <laughs> some playing card uh, numbers, actually, or names, rather. Uh, let's see what's on the second track here. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. Glorious. Uh, yeah, for those of you who uh, speak Spanish, that's just a joke. Like, I, I imagine he was actually saying then that uh, enemy, uh, how do you call bombing planes in, in English? I don't know, well, planes that throw bombs. Uh, he was saying something about those incoming. But, yeah, of course, I mean, the thing is, when you see a machine like this, you have to make that the joke of either, like, you're being interrogated or uh, this is, like, a machine used in the war or something when you see one of these. And, yeah, that guy was making the most obvious joke when you see one of these machines. Amazing, huh? Pause, actually. I uh, haven't shown you that. It pauses. What the heck do you expect? It lifts... The, uh, the pinch roller, that's all it does. So let's disengage this if I can. There we go. This spool here is too small for this tape, and it actually came uh, spooled on this, and it was just overflowing. So you can imagine the nightmare that was threading the tape like from this spool, which was here. Uh, onto this one. You can imagine the freaking nightmare that that was. And yeah, it, it was actually in reverse. <laughs> it was. So yeah, it, the, it, clearly the original spool was this one. So yeah, this is just, I mean, stop in the uh, record mode. It pretty much does nothing unless you play, you push both play and record at the same time. For those of you who don't know, uh, back in the day in, in magnetic uh, tape systems, you had to push both playback and record at the same time for you to record. If you pressed record and only record, you didn't play uh, push playback, uh, you actually got a level reading or a monitor, so that means you could listen to uh, what you were recording. And yeah, this thing doesn't have a monitor, which is quite annoying. It only has like the level meter and that's it. No sound comes out of it uh, whenever you're recording. So that's quite annoying. But yeah, you have to press these two. I'm not going to do it since, you know, it erases the tape. I don't feel like erasing this tape. Mainly because you can get these tapes for peanuts. Uh, here in Spain, for some reason, they seem to be really common uh, these tapes the players not so much the real to real players magnetophones um, and yep that's the sound of a rewound tape so the magnetophones for some reason uh, are not that common like at all this is the first one I've actually uh, seen for like a reasonable price I actually paid 25 euro for this guy and this guy, so both of them were 25 euro, not each, they both of them, the lot, and they actually got a bo box of cables that just came with them, uh, with, there were some old headphones, uh, ones that are actually pretty cool, 
Mm, they are your, your typical 80s foam uh, thingy headphones, typical ones that came with Walkmans and all that. I actually bought a brand new uh, Walkman uh, WMF31 uh, a couple of days ago. I came with that one of the when, with one of those uh, headphones, one pair, and I gave those to my mother because I hate seeing things rotting inside a box. I was there was no way I was gonna use those headphones. Of course, I'm gonna use my Porta Pros, which I freaking love. These things are just pretty much the best bang for your buck. Well, they used to be, but now they're more expensive. But they used to be the best bang for your buck uh, headphones out there. So. Uh, yeah, that, that's the thing. Uh, I'm not gonna use the headphones that came with my Walkman, but I got those in the box. And there's uh, a pair that actually have a blue foam, kind of a blue-greenish foam, and they sound amazing. Like, for what they are, they sound amazing. They, they kind of, they almost sound like my Porta Pros. Almost. There's another pair which is just a promotional uh, airline pair which, eh. Also another thing that came in the box was an Ortofon replacement needle. <laughs> and I just so happened to use order an Ortofon uh, cart on my turntable. I have an OM cart and well, yeah. It also, there was also a uh, dual branded 45 adapter for a turntable so I'm guessing the Ortofon uh, the order for needle uh, was for that dual turntable, but the needle is brand new, so I opened it up. Uh, I don't think it's an original needle. I don't even think it's elliptical. I think it is uh, just a regular uh, conical needle, but it's nice to have a replacement needle nonetheless, you know. Uh, actually, if it's a conical, uh, I, I will get some use out of it to play some uh, worn down 45s, which, yeah, sound pretty much like crap with an elliptical tip, an elliptical, an elliptical stylus, sorry, uh, you have to use audiophile terms when you're referring to vinyl and all that, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, I actually say that, like, I actually mock audiophiles, but the thing is, in the 70s or 80s, my a uh, stereo system that I have in my room would be considered quite an audiophile system. Uh, except for the amplifier, which is the, just a regular Unitra. Uh, I actually have a... I don't remember the model number of the preamp, but the preamp is some extremely high-end uh, Grandir. Like, some extremely high-end uh, Grandir. That, that I, it seems like it cost a fortune back in the day. Uh, and my turntable is the Grandir that came with it, which is actually a Philips 9 something I don't know, it's... they're called... they're nicknamed Plastic Fantastics in some communities. And it sounds freaking amazing, it's an amazing turntable. And it, it has freaking touch controls, where have you seen a freaking touch control, like, turntable? It's, it's just mind-blowing. Well... Uh, I've been ranting on for five minutes again, so yeah, if you have made it to the end of, of the video, which is pretty much right now, congratulations, you can stand my shit, which, yeah, uh, it's quite a feat in and uh, in of itself, but yeah, I think that's about it, so it is, what time is it, oh, is it really 8 o'clock? already it is eight o'clock already damn uh, let's turn this guy off uh, so yeah uh, that's about it so I don't know maybe I'll make a video about this I don't guarantee it I told someone in the comments I cannot remember sorry I cannot remember your username right now uh, someone asked me for a an Amstrad CPC video. I haven't made a video about the CPC mainly because I'm not familiar with that computer at all. At all, I'm I'm not. Uh, I'm an IBM PC guy. Uh, I've been like I've, I've had 
uh, IBM compatibles since I was six. So I, I started with a uh, 486 VX2. So I really don't know that much about, uh, you know, uh, British micros. Um, so yeah, I'm trying to familiarize myself with the whole Amstrad thingy. Thing is, the Amstrad, I don't know, it's more of like a gaming computer. It's, uh, it's for playing computer games, really. It, uh, you cannot really do anything. Well, I mean, it runs CPM, which is pretty freaking amazing for such a cheap computer. It runs CPM and you can do all of your office uh, stuff on it. Of course, you can run any CPM program. Uh, but <sighs> I'm not that familiar with CPM either. I'm more, I, I'm a DOS guy. I'm a Unix guy. I just don't know that much about uh, CPM. But I haven't actually run CPM yet. I have to get uh, a set of disks for that. But the thing is, uh, that uh, computer is more gaming oriented, I guess. In fact, one of you know one of the uh, selling uh, points of it was this for for it having like a separate monitor instead of using the TV was so. I cannot remember the exact quote, but Alan Sugar said something about little Timmy playing his games and not using his parents. TV as an example so yeah it's it's more of a game oriented computer and, and I don't really like the games on it at all uh, the only PC games I really like are point-and-click adventures maybe some of them and is there well portal <laughs> portal I freaking love portal but apart from that I don't I don't really actually play many video games these days. I do have a lot of consoles, a ton of them. I do have pretty much uh, well, how many? I have like 50 going all the way back from the Atari 2600. I have a 2600 Junior up to the Wii. The Wii I think is the newest console I have. I had two Xbox 360s at one point. One of them was completely broken. The other one had a dead um, laser. I actually, instead of trying to flash the drive on it, I actually, well, instead of flashing another drive, the, a replacement drive, I try and going uh, drive driveless, I guess you call it, with a mod chip and everything. I just destroyed that thing, so no ex no more Xbox uh, 360. I paid five bucks for it, so I don't really care. Um, and then I had a 3DS which got stolen. Uh, it's the only thing I've only uh, I only I've only had like three things stolen, which were uh, my collection of Nintendo DS games, uh, long uh, long long time ago, and my 3DS and the mobile phone. And the phone wasn't really that good. The the thing that I hate the most was the. Um, the the 3DS I miss that thing so much. I also funny thing I had Cubic Ninja for the 3DS, and I bought it at a thrift store, brand new, uh, for five euro. Before all the Cubic Ninja thing happened, and I literally only had two games: Super Mario 3D. Uh, I don't remember if it was Land or World, and Cubic Ninja. Yeah. And my 3DS got stolen uh, like a couple months before the whole uh, homebrew scene uh, came along. Which, yeah. And I'm not getting a 3DS. I, I don't really do anything on the go. If I want to play some games on the go, if I'm like uh, on a long journey or something, uh, I'll just bring my, my Game Boy Color, really, and yeah. That keeps me entertained. I have some arcade classics like I have Centipede and I have uh, I have Alleyway, which is a clone of um, a clone of Breakout and yeah, well, I, I have like 
Zelda and Zelda. I'm not really that much into Zelda. I do like uh, I do like it, but not that much into it. And I have all Pokemon. I have all of the Game Boy and Game Boy Color Pokemon games except for Green, which yeah, but. Really, it just keeps me entertained. The Game Boy Color is more than enough. And I'm not going to use my phone for playing game. I just hate having no uh, tactile feedback when I press a button. I just hate it. So, yeah, the Game Boy Color is small and like it uses almost no batteries. The battery life is... I, I Like on modern alkaline AA's, I get like 20 hours of battery life or so. Uh, it's... Uh, I don't know. It's it, I just like that console. Anyway, I've been ranting for like 10 minutes, and yeah, this would be like easier if I sh actually showed my face and you could see someone talking instead of just seeing this shit like they're doing nothing. But the thing is, I don't, I do not want to show my face on the internet, even though it is already out there, I do not really want to. Also, uh, I'm not really in a position where, yeah. Nah, I don't know. Maybe if all of my shyness and... Well, it's not shyness, it's free and autism. Literally. But, yeah. Uh, by the way, if anyone's offended by the fact that I'm saying uh, autism and all that, because I I think I mentioned it. <laughs> I have mentioned it um, two or three times because, well, I'm... I'm actually diagnosed as an Asperger. Uh, I have an uh, Asperger syndrome, so yeah, that's one of the th one of the reasons why I collect so much old stuff and all that. I guess uh, I also like trains a lot, uh, but yeah, if someone gets offended, uh, I'll like I don't know. It's my videos. Stop watching them. <laughs> that's it. I'm I'm not gonna shut up just because uh, someone gets offended, you know, if it's something like, I don't know, something about killing people or something like that, uh, maybe I will refrain myself, but, well, I'm, I'm, I don't defend killing people, anyone, I don't, uh, but, yeah, also in my YouTube videos, I have to, like, be politically correct, nah, I don't really care about that, but, not that I'm really politically incorrect. There's no such thing as political correctness. And yeah, I'm not gonna go into that. I'm not gonna go into that because I know I'm getting into muddy waters there. And no. Also, I forgot to mention the Betamax has DNCs instead of RCAs. For video in and out. And it has RF and all that. And that was it. So, I'm gonna stop ranting now because this thing's... Just this segment is already 25 minutes, so yeah, let's see if my cat's out here. Nope, she's not. Uh, so yeah, thanks for watching, thanks for standing uh, all of this, if you've gotten this far, uh, thank you, and I don't know. Goodbye, that's it.